Blog Talk Radio. Archangels, ghosts, and Bigfoot, oh my. It's just another night for Supernatural Girls. Real stories, real answers to life's biggest supernatural mysteries. And now, for another exciting interview with paranormal experts from this world and others. Here's your host, paranormal researcher Patricia Baker, on the one, the only, Supernatural Girls. Welcome, everyone, to another exciting episode of Supernatural Girls Radio. I'm your host, Patricia Baker, and I'm here with my co-host, PK. Patricia Kirkman, how are you tonight? Doing fine. I just left the sweat lodge. Everything's great. <laughs> you sure did. In I did in my office. Oh, what are you up to, 110? Uh, just about. Oh, goodness. It's, We're going into uh, fall weather like, here in the Berkshires. It's like. I don't know, oh, in the 70s. Show off. It feels chilly. <laughs> <laughs> no, I prefer it more, but not as warm as where you are. Now, this well, is we not have, fun. I know, but we've got a guest tonight that also comes from Arizona, and I know we're right. both so excited about this show. My God, Tony Rathman is going to be here with us talking about all of his experiences and his wife, because he works with his gorgeous wife. And mm-hmm. they have the ghost box, the spirit boxes. They are. He's going to tell us all about what they've been doing, all the messages they've been receiving. I can't wait because you know how much I love this kind of technology, right? Oh, God. I'm the queen of contraptions. Every contraption, I need to know about it. So Tony will be joining us shortly. But before he comes on, this has been one hell of a week. Now, you have been looking at the numbers. What are you seeing? Well, it's a three month and it, three deals with creativity, communications, all that good stuff. It has a luck factor to it, but it is a review of last year. It also deals with people gossiping and getting into the negative side of things by stirring the pot. And by taking a look at that, I was I had a chuckle when they were talking about Michelle Obama's speech. It took her a number of weeks to go through and be trained to be able to give that, quote, very off-the-wall, very dignified, quick, what was it, a whole minute or two talk last night? (laughs) I didn't see it, so I'm going to take your word for it. Oh, I I didn't see it. I just heard about it. I did the other part. I did the checking to find out what it would take for – she had a speech. She had people there helping her with it, writing Etc. Excuse me for a second, but that that wasn't so bad. When Joe Biden hugs his wife and then introduces himself as Joe Biden's husband, <laughs> and he's going to be president, are they crazy? Oh God, help us! <laughs> I mean, he doesn't even know who he is. I or guess who not. She is. That's a very scary thing. More scary than we want to pay attention to. And then oh. we're taking a look at our the little sweetheart that's running for vice president. Now, we do have a lot of things where she stands out because she's gone from being Indian when she was running for president, and now that she's running for vice president, she's black. I wish she'd decide who she is. She can't make that decision up. So I said, okay, she can't decide on that. What in the world is she going to do when it comes to the government, especially when we know damn well if they get in, Joe's not going to make it, and she's going to be president. Because huh, we'll be lucky if he makes it through the inauguration. If oh, my win. goodness, really. So the uh, numbers are telling you quite a lot. Oh, you betcha, you betcha. I'm sorry. I just hate to put it this way, but I'm, a, I'm looking at the Donald getting through it and taking care of us. I know there's enough people that dislike a lot of his abruptness and the way he is, but, my God, look what he's pulled us through these last three and some years. It's yeah, just, it's you know, you have time. to know a lot of people. I don't choose to talk politics with my friends because everybody's got their own opinion. But 
I'm, I'm taking a look at, at this young lady. When she was, she's been district attorney. She's got a lot of kudos for her background. But she went with this uh, Willie Brown, who was now 84 years old. She went with him, say, 20 years ago for a long period of time. But he boosted her career, and I guess that's what you call sleeping to the top. Mm-hmm. So, you know, what can you say? Uh, yeah, it's- I'm just going to say I wish them well, but I'll feel much better when the – the balloting is over with, and they say Trump has won because he can finish off what he started. Doesn't mean he's not going to keep his little Twitter fingers going. I pray to God he <laughs> slows down. But nobody's perfect, so we'll just say well, a that's, that. Yeah, that's for that sure. Well, you are the third he- person now, PK, on our show that has predicted that Trump is going to win. The only one who did not predict that was Simon Chokaisky, who was on the show last week, who is also right. an astrologer. But um, so far we've got three predictors saying Trump and one saying Biden. So, hmm, we're going to have to wait and see, I guess. But uh, from what I heard, the, the show that went off in the last couple nights wasn't all that exciting, but we'll see Good. how people respond. I, oh. In fact, there was a uh, gal that was a uh, Kimberly uh, Clackick, I guess is her last name. Clackick. Oh, she's a she's a yep. rising star. Yes. Well, she was on, and oh, Michelle Obama got 10.1 million views. Uh, Kimberly got 31.7 million views. Yeah, you should see her commercial. If everybody, just for the sake of watching a really well done commercial for her campaign, uh-huh. it's no matter what your party affiliation is. She really uh, did a great job with her campaign oh, yeah. video, so it's, it's worth watching. And I do, I, I, obviously, the numbers are not going to lie. She is of great interest to people in all communities, but especially in the black community in Baltimore. So we're going to have to watch mm-hmm. that one. She's already been on the Howie Carr Show here in New England, and so she's, uh, she's definitely somebody of tremendous interest. Very charismatic lady, and she really knows oh, her stuff. And yeah, I lived so. in Annapolis, Maryland for uh, over 20-some years and watched what was going on in Baltimore. And ah. there again, we can thank Nancy Pelosi and her family for the Baltimore mess because they took the money and run. You know, oh. if you go back and check so it out. It's sad. Uh, you know, and in the, uh, yeah, it's terrible. And you know Baltimore, and in this commercial, you know, uh, Kim Clasic goes walking through the neighborhoods, and it's it's a pretty stark view of what has happened well, there over the years. Uh, we used to go up there for lunch or the Inner Harbor. The last uh, couple of years I was up there, didn't bother going, wouldn't dare go there at night. Yeah, it's so dangerous. It's like yeah. one of the top five most they, dangerous cities in the country. So, yeah, the, but it'll be Harbor interesting Ford, to what I I really like her. I mean, I I thought what she did was tremendous on her video. I, and she, she's going to really be an up and comer. Yeah, thank God I think we've you're got right. somebody like her to take, take place of OAC and a few of the others that are out there uh, yeah, tearing, right. making us want to tear our hair out. <laughs> no, I really like this lady, and God bless her. I think she's going to do well. So, and again, this is. This is, these are times where we need a strong leader, and let me tell you why. Now, you and I, PK, have been talking about this. Mm-hmm. Captain Kramer, who we adore, he is a real He's badass good. guy, right? He is good. been on the show a couple times. We're going to have him back in September if he's available. And the other day I was just sitting around having lunch, and a text came through from him. And what it was talking about is basically uh, this. I mean, a couple of weeks ago, Captain Kramer. Now, keep in mind, everybody, in case you haven't heard the Captain Kramer shows, he has predicted accurately things that are coming about. And he started with COVID when other people were saying it's going to be nothing. He came in and talked about it and said it's going to be a real problem. And he gave us details that nobody else had. So... This time, he said two weeks ago now, he predicted that there was going to be a bubonic plague unleashed Mm -hmm. on us by the Chinese, and it was going to be weaponized bubonic plague. So Mm -hmm. when you think about Lyme disease, that also, they say, has been weaponized. Well, this is even worse. This is bubonic plague, which is deadly, which can be transmitted from person to person, and 
So anyways, he told me this is next, and I questioned him about what the goal is, and he said the target is everybody in the United States. And Mm -hmm. he said it's, um, again, it was distributed by the Chinese according to the information he gave me. Now, I will tell you this as well, everybody. I also have other contacts that are involved with dark ops and things like that with the government, Mm -hmm. and I did get confirmation of this. So it's not just Captain Kramer. I did get some other information that said exactly the same thing. After I got the information from you today, I put a call into a person that knows many things, and he said, I was just going to call you to let you know that this is where you have to go and what you've got to pay attention to, the exact same information coming from a totally different source. Yeah, so So we do have to pay attention. This is a a very big thing, and I did question Randy uh, Kramer uh, again about the supply chain because of course when things like this happen we see what happens to the supply chain we see what the overwhelm to our health care system so what he was saying is yes there will be overwhelm to our health care system there will be deaths and Mm -hmm. uh, the supply chain will probably slow down and be affected but it won't stop so that was the piece of good news now i also said um as Based on what he shared last time, there were going to be stages of things that were going to make us totally nuts, I think, with the things that are going on in the world today, unlike anything we've ever seen. And he said the next thing, global military conflict conflict, excuse me, with one or more, either the Russians, the Chinese, Iranians, North Koreans. Okay? That's stage three. Now, here's the other one, invasion, stage four. Mm-hmm. Now, I was thinking about that, and, of course, the first thing that came to my mind was, okay, what country is going to try to invade us, right? But I don't think he meant that, because when he was on our show last time, what did he say? He said alien presence. Right. So well, I'm not sure, everybody, that's... what was meant by that, you know, the invasion part. And I don't mean to scare be... people, but, again, It could be that been... the terms of invasion. If it's coming from the outer sources that we've been talking about, when are they going to let us know they're here type thing, that could be exactly what it is. They're finally going to be invading our space to let us know that they're here. It doesn't mean it's negative. Yes, exactly. It could be very positive, you know, because the Mm -hmm. last stage is, he said, resolution and victory for us. So that's the positive side, everybody. Again, I don't want to strike fear into anybody's heart. Um, but I am just delivering the message that I received from Captain Kramer, knowing that he has been accurate in what he has shared previously. So I will share that with you, and I hope we will all stay safe through this next trial and tribulation. <laughs> and, well, oh, it, my goodness. <laughs> the fact that this month is a review of last year, and it deals with communication. Next month is a review of this year. Details, health, restrictions, and limitations. But come October, there's going to be change. So yeah, well, all well, we have to get through the next six weeks, folks. Okay. All right. Well, hang tight, everybody, and make sure you keep listening to the show. I'll be happy to update you with any other information I get. In the meantime, make sure that your own property, if you live in a situation where mice are coming in, you need to make sure they're not, because this is being spread through trees and rodents. Yeah, so be careful. I mean, not just be careful, but be vigilant about making sure that you have something, whether it's a one of those uh, sound things that keeps rodents away um, or something like that, whatever you need to use, but you need to make sure that your area is clear of this type of thing because that's how they're spreading it. So, Also, please. That's what Captain told us, and so here yep. you go. Also, please. Yes. Now, and well, just on a lighter also, note, I'll just add something for all of us, that, but since we've been talking the governmental things, that Nancy Pelosi wants to remove all the old relics of the bygone era from the state capitol. Yep. And someone popped up and said, is she resigning? 
So I figured that would be enough of a tidbit. Yeah. Wouldn't that huh. be nice? Yeah. She's as old as a kid. She's not resigned. We know that. She wouldn't <laughs> dare give up. But she's old uh, enough to be one of our older relics. Yeah. There you go. Oh, my. Well, also, everybody, go to our Facebook page. We have some great stories there, and one of them is about what I think is one of the most scariest things around the Wendigo. There are some new encounters that have been written about by Brent Swanser from Mysterious Universe, and I reposted it on our Facebook page. So make sure to go there and take a look. There's a lot of things we've encountered on the show, and even personally, but nothing like that. I hope to never encounter a Wendigo. And when you read the article, you will see why. So we got to have somebody on the show to talk about that at some point. But it is one mm-hmm. of the most frightening entities on the planet. So take oh, a look yeah. at our Facebook page. Give us a like and follow. Follow us on Twitter also, please. And Instagram. We're on Instagram now. And we may even be on TikTok if it doesn't get banned. So who knows where we're going to be next. But anyhow, so. Let's get back to the show. We've got a great guest tonight, Tony Rath. Yeah, he, he is the founder and lead investigator for Entity Voices Paranormal Investigations, EVPI, located in your neck of the woods, PK, Phoenix, Arizona. Yeah, I found Yay. that out today. I'm a happy That's camper. Right. I know. You guys got to plan a visit. And has spent the last decade discovering the truth about spirits, entities, and life after death. Now, Tony leads professionally operated paranormal investigators into some of the darkest corners of Arizona. And just about anywhere he travels, including private home and business investigations, haunted historical locations, haunted hotels, and he has traveled to hundreds of locations throughout the country. And he has a gorgeous wife named Sherry, and she's right by his side. They both investigate together, which is tremendously cool. And they have they are using some very unusual technology that I certainly want to hear all about, and I know you do too, and so does our audience. So that's why they're here. No. So let's get Tony on the show. Tony, welcome to Supernatural Girls. Thank you. It's a pleasure to be here. It's a thrill for us to have you. Now, you've got to tell us how you got involved with this. How? Sure. Um, that would have been my wife. <laughs> when, we, when we got married, my, my wife is from the Philippines, and she's a U.S. citizen now. But um, during that time, um, she, as a child, had experienced a lot of, of paranormal activity from, you know, what she had talked about. And, you know, if you, Anyone who knows anything about the Philippines, I mean, they're very, they're very superstitious as far as, you know, anything ghost related or spirit related. And she grew up with stories, um, you know, her mother, her aunts, uncles talking about different activities that, you know, they had experienced or that, um, that occurred. And so she just, it was just part of her, part of her being. And when we met, um, you know, she's always trying to get me to watch paranormal shows. And she, you, she's always saying to me, you have to see this. This is, this is so fascinating. Sit down for a minute and watch this. Well, that's about how long I would last, about one minute. And <laughs> me having a complete scientific background, my father was a physical science teacher, chemistry, and a physics teacher. So anytime I had a question about, how something happened in the world. I always got a scientific answer. Well, now here's my wife saying, you know, listen to these people speaking that are no longer alive. And I'm like, yeah, okay. And I, I kind of dismissed it. But then one Valentine's day, she said to me, she said, I want to do something different this year. Cause we'd always go to a hotel, relax for the weekend, sit by the pool. Um, she said, I want to go ghost hunting. And I was like, Oh, kidding me. But I, of course, being, being an appeasing wife. husband, yeah, I said, okay, let me see what I can do. So I did some research, found a hotel in Phoenix that had a haunted reputation, um, booked the weekend, and thought I was done. But then I realized, wait a minute, these people are using equipment. <laughs> She's going to need things to investigate with. So I, I went out, bought a cheap uh, night vision camera, digital recorder, and an EMS meter, and I thought, okay, you know, we'll, we'll never touch this stuff again. 
Um, this should make her happy. Well, of course it did. You know, I, I investigated with her, but it wasn't until she got this stuff home and she started going through the photographs, the video, the digital recordings. I was absolutely blown away. I mean, we had images in our photographs. We had questions that we were asking out loud to these empty floors. We were one of three guests in this entire hotel, 326 rooms, seven stories. There were only two other guests in the whole hotel. We never saw them. And we literally traveled every floor, the basement, um, areas of the hotel that technically we weren't supposed to go in, but we, they let us at the time. But what she was reviewing, she was calling me over every three minutes. Listen to this. Look at this. You, I was blown away. I mean, for months, I, I tried to figure out rational explanations for how we were getting the responses that were showing up and what was in the photographs. Finally, I just gave up because I, I could not come up with a reasonable explanation how that was there. And then, of course, we started going back to try to replicate the responses, and we did. And I think we investigated that one hotel in the past 10 years over 50 times. Oh my goodness! But that's how, that's how I got that's how I got into it. What hotel was this? A... It's the Hotel San Carlos, downtown Phoenix. Uh huh. Interesting. God goodness gracious! Yeah, you're such a good husband. <laughs> and by wow. being a good husband, it, it brought you a whole new life. See, that's wonderful. Not only it, does it, he it, take it where she wants. To Oh, buys all the extra equipment and everything. She's got to love you to death for being such a sweetheart. <laughs> well, exactly. I, I, think she, I think she created a monster now that she, that she can no longer control because everything <laughs> that, I mean, every free moment I have, luckily she's got an interest in the paranormal too, and that's why it works so well for us. But every free moment I have is involved in the paranormal um, in one way or another, like just last, Saturday night, we were up in Globe at the 1910 Haunted Globe Jail, which was just absolutely fascinating. Um, we spent the night there investigating, you did. and uh, yeah, it was uh, it was fantastic. Gosh, so tell us about the technology, quite Tony. Something. I'm sorry, what what was that, Tony? I said tell I understand the- that that jail is quite something. Yeah, it's uh, it's not. It's much smaller than I thought, but the activity we captured was um, was off the off the charts for for the six seven hours we were in there, and uh, yeah, it, it, it was an incredible uh, incredible place, and I, I would recommend it definitely. And we also run we run the uh, Copper Canyon Paranormal Research Center, which was the old Phelps Dodge Hospital in Ajo. Uh, we operate that. We we got we got a chance a couple of years ago to investigate. I think we only spent like four hours in there, but we came out of there with some of the most amazing evidence we had ever captured. And we've we've investigated all over the United States, hundreds of locations, and even around the world. And um, what came out of the the Phelps the old Phelps Dodge Hospital um, was just incredible. So now we have it. We have it open so other investigators can book a night and uh, find out for themselves what what goes on in there. <laughs> have you ever had anyone that wanted to leave after they got there I mean, because of panic? Well, let me let me tell you this story. I had a group when we first opened it um, from L.A. Uh, asking mm-hmm. about it, and I said, "Yeah, it's bookable." And I said, "You know, I just want to let you know." I said, "You know." There's lots of stories about haunted places, but I said, I'm going to tell you, this place is no joke. Um, what goes on there is real, and the experiences are, you know, self-evident. You'll see for yourself when you're there, and they're like, oh, we've been doing this for years, no problem. They lasted 17 minutes, oh, and they no. were out. They were, uh, they were. They, they heard, screaming they heard, into the night. You. <laughs> they did. Was that a feel good they for did. you? A little bit, and I hate to admit that, but yeah, a little bit. <laughs> I can see why. I can see why. <laughs> now, you've got to tell us about the technology. Like, what are you using exactly now today, 10 years later, to pick up these EVPs and these, these images and photos? What kind of equipment do you use? 
Well, for the, for the images, I mean, that not much has changed. We use um, full-spectrum cameras and night vision cameras. Um, the full spectrum is really, really helpful because it, it, it shows the three different light spectrums, visible light, um, infrared light, and uh, ultraviolet light. So basically any photo that you take is going to capture all three light sources. The human eye can only see vis visible light, but a full spectrum will see the other two that the eye can't see. So you have an option to capture things that you wouldn't be able to see with your own eye until you see the photograph. And then and for the voices. How is something like that, Tony? Well, I'll give you a little trick. You can buy one of those little um, action cameras that run about, I don't know, 40 bucks. And if you take the lens out and pop the, uh, the ultraviolet and uh, infrared filter off the back of it, screw it back in, You'll have an ultraviolet camera for forty bucks. Wow, what a great hack! I like it. <laughs> Wonderful. Is there any particular brand that you recommend for using that hack? They're all they're they're all the same um, as far as the construction today, so mm -hmm. it really doesn't matter. I mean, the the GoPros are nice. The the SJ cams are about a fourth of the price of the GoPros. And uh, they're they're good quality mics, they're good quality lenses, and you know for forty bucks to be able to to shoot in both um, IR and full spectrum as well as visible light, you just can't beat it. Unreal! Wow! Pop. Okay. Just pop out the lens. Is that right? Yeah, you just take out the you just take out the filter. You unscrew the lens. You'll see a little colored uh, filter on the end of it. Pop that thing off, screw it back in, and it's full spectrum. Whew, I'll be there. That's great. Whew. What about now the audio side of things? What do you use for that? Well, that was a combination of over the last decade. Um, I've built probably over 12, somewhere between 12 and 15 different spirit boxes. And what a spirit box is is basically a, a receiver of what is considered to be spirit voices. Now, anybody who who's ever seen, you know, the TV shows where they use that tiny little one in their hand, that's an, an SB7 spirit box. But the problem with it, and this is the first one we ever owned as well, it sounds like radio static and yes it does it's terribly hard to hear the responses but we had one when we started investigating the hotel san carlos and i would bring these things back home and i would go through them my wife would always go through the pictures and the, and the other stuff but i really started diving into what was on my recording when i would use it and i kept telling her there are answers to almost every question we ask and so I play it for her. I'm like, do you hear that? And she's like, no, I don't hear it. I don't hear it. I don't hear it. So then the next step was to figure out how we clear that up, how we get their voices more pronounced, how we get rid of that static noise. Now, there's a difference in opinion from paranormal investigators of whether that static noise is absolutely a necessity because people say, well, they take that white noise and they manipulate it to get their words out. You know, there, there's a million variables I'm not going to all get into at the moment. But mm -hmm. we built box after box after box with changes, manipulations, trying to get the voices to stand out, to get the distortion reduced, and get as clear of a signal and an answer as possible. So after 10 years, the box we're using today we call the Evox. And with the way that we have it configured, there is basically no hurt static, only responses which are 80% crystal clear to the, to the ear. Um, and it uses a variety of different techniques and mechanisms to do that, which I'm not going to go into the exact specifics of how I built it, but, um, but it's, it's, it's phenomenal compared to, 
if we go back 10 years and us using the SP7 and going, how did we even do that? Because <laughs> what we have today is, is night and day different. Do you make these boxes for people to purchase as well? You know, I've been asked that more times than I can count. Right now, I do not. Um, okay. We, what I build, I we, sure. yeah, we only, we only built them to use ourselves. Um, the one that we're using now took me probably five months to build, and oh, I spent the last, I spent the last year and a half making um, adjustments and refinements to it. Um, but who knows? Maybe somewhere down the road. Um, mm-hmm. Production may 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 um may be an opportunity, but but right now we're still we're still on the research side of it, looking for answers. So, well, yeah, I'm you getting, do the hard work, <laughs> and we reap the benefits. <laughs> I'm getting all kinds of texts from people now saying, "Can I buy it? Can I buy it?" So, <laughs> I, I have to tell you, I think you have a pretty good clientele to purchase it if it could ever streamline production. Yeah, you know, and and at some point that might be a possibility, but you know, it, this is a funny story. But I was doing um, I was doing some cold case um, investigation with a, a team member and friend that I have, uh, Jeanette Lucas, and we were doing some tests, and she was working with some people from the FBI, and so I did the test for her, and I sent over the the recording. And the FBI actually had an interest in the box. And, of course, they were asking me, do you have this patented? And I'm thinking, yeah, if I patent it, I have to lay out how it was designed, and then That's you guys right. can just go You guys can just go look it up. So yeah. I said, no, it's, it's not patented. Mm-hmm. Well, the capabilities are, are just enormous when you think about it and in, in also in law enforcement in terms of catching criminals and solving murders. I would think, you know, once you get a good team participating on the other side, you could find out a lot of information that you really couldn't find out any other way. Well, you know, that that's brings up two um, great points that you just made me think about. But, yes, we've had that happen, and, you know, I'm even shocked today at some of the things that um, come through this. And we've really widened the use of it into areas that we, we hadn't in the last, you know, year or two, um, from cold cases to, you know, people saying, hey, you know, I've got questions, I need answers on this, or I want to try to reach this person, so they, they hire us to, to perform a session with them. But you know, when you were talking about murders and stuff, um, I'm working with the Dark Zone, who's producing another show. They did one back in May for for, for the Conjuring House, yes. and the end of yes. August, the end of August 26th through the 31st, they're doing um, the Lizzie Borden House, which um, my wife and I will will be part of that one as well. But you know, one of the questions that you were saying about murders and what happened, well, that's probably one of the best well-known double murders that's still mm-hmm. kind of unresolved today. And, you know, some questions were asked of me to see what the box could answer. And, you know, I'm not going to say anything more than that, but I know a couple of other paranormal researchers did similar things with their technology. And, uh, you know, so we'll have to see what uh, what kind of answers come from it. But uh, it'll be very yeah, interesting. Yeah, that's anyway, going to be that, that... fun. And now people can sign up and pay, I think it's a pretty nominal fee, to watch what goes on in those five days, right? Correct. So Correct. Yeah, it's, it's, we... it's four days, four-day live stream, 24 hours a day. And, uh, yeah, I think it's like 15 or 20 bucks for the for the four days. Um, but a fascinating event, and uh, should be should be a really really great show. It should be tremendous, and I know the Conjuring House. I was a part of that one. It was really a lot of fun, and and very revealing because we all had different takes on what was going on in that house. But again, it was a great interaction, and while people were really you know back on lockdown months ago. It was fun for them to watch. So as soon as we get the information from Renee, who's going to be on the show next week, 
we'll be able mm-hmm. to tell people exactly where to go to sign up for that event. And then you can, you know, peek in anytime you want, watch what's happening, and hear what the ghost box told Tony about this murder. <laughs> That's up in our neck of the woods yeah. here in Massachusetts. Mm-hmm. Correct, yes. We're in the hot so, spot. You get the death road. <laughs> we we get all of this stuff. We have so much history. But also, it's great because, again, while these producers are so ingenious, they have figured out a way to work with all, all of you guys by uh, basically virtually. And, you know, we're all kind of still cooperating with quarantine in some ways. But this is going to give you a lot of information and a great experience once you sign up. So we'll be sure to announce that next week when Renee is on the show. So that's going to be fun. So you've already got some answers. I know you're not going to tell us what they are, but you've already got some. Yeah, I, I don't want to reveal anything, but, uh, uh, yeah, and that's that's just one example just because when you started talking about murder cases. But we have gotten information out of this box that just even today, you know, I'm still trying to wrap my head around how this is happening. And, you know, it's I'm like a kid in a candy store every time I use it and, and something comes through and then somebody turns around and says, and says, oh, my God, that's that's absolutely correct. How did you know that? Or, you know, that's that's my father or that's his voice or, you know, it's just it's amazing. It, it's just it blow my, blows my mind, you can say. So not only do you do research of haunted places, but you also do private sessions for people who want to talk to someone or are looking for information from the other side? That That is correct. Um, we've had and they, more and more you know, people come and, and hire us to do sessions for them. And uh, we haven't had anyone disappointed yet. Um, the last woman can't mention names or anything because it's obviously a, a private um, ordeal. But mm-hmm. she had questions about um, her husband's health and the box spit out everything from issues to concerns to some medical terms and stuff. I, I wasn't even sure I knew, <laughs> but uh, it was it was incredible. How much do you charge for these private sessions? For a private session that runs 45 minutes to an hour, uh, about 200 bucks. That's very reasonable. That's very reasonable. My goodness. Yeah. Well, yeah, and for every 10 minutes of audio, it takes me about an hour to go through it and determine exactly what's being said. And then, of course, I put it all in the video format, so everything that's said is then comes up with text, so it's both audible and um, readable. And then we run um, double recorders, so we can verify one recorder against the other, as well as um, video record it, so that there's no confusion at all about what's being said. So how does a typical session go? Because I've got so much interest, I can't tell you my phone is blowing up right now with questions about mm-hmm. uh, how do you conduct a private session like that? Well, it, it depends on what's being asked. But to well, like, for example, up, the, the woman that was asking about her husband's health, like how would you do that one? Okay, well, all I asked for from her was a photo of her husband, and a photo of him and somebody else, it didn't matter who it was, just somebody that I could have the spirits tell me who's in the photo. And without me saying anything, I literally just hold the photo up and the answers come through the box. And then once I know I have a connection, then I'll start the questions that they will give me. So I'll, all I'll ask from them is who they're asking about, a photo, And then, of course, a list of questions that they want answered. And, of course, the last one I did, I did via a live video feed so they could see, you know, what I was doing. I could see them. We could talk back and forth, and the box spit out his answers. That is so much fun. Oh, my goodness. Now, how can people get a hold of you if they're interested in something like that? Real easily. um, We've got multiple websites, uh, entityvoices.com. Um, is our paranormal site. Um, I'm on Facebook under Tony Rathman. Um, we've got uh, uh, we've got a ton of websites. Um, we've got one for the Paranormal Research Center. There's um, email. There's telephone number there. Um, any of those, 
channels would be the easiest um, to get a hold of me. Of course, they can always send an email to contact at entityvoices.com, which I'll get as well. This is so cool. PK, are you going to do this? I'm thinking very seriously about doing this. You know, when my husband passed, uh, I knew a week or two before, I wasn't sure what was going on, whether it was he or my son that was in trouble. And this was uh, 40-some years ago. And uh, he he was 37 years old. And next thing you know, uh, this went on for a few days. He thinks I'm losing it, and he let it go. And on a specific date, he, he passed away. And the chaplain had been with me, and he kept saying, oh, this isn't going to happen. And it did. And no one could ever explain why. At 37, he died of a massive coronary. He had never been sick a day in his life. So I've oh always wondered God. how. So wow. Why I'm, I'm interested in, in knowing the how come. Oh yeah. Yeah, we were working on we were working on a, a cold case that was in um, Nevada, um, mm-hmm. and I'm not going to say names or anything, but the box kept saying, and there was there was suspicion both from authorities and from um, other people that working on the case that body was probably in the water somewhere underneath the water. That's why they weren't finding it. Well, our box kept saying um, field or meadow, it kept saying. And, you know, they, they, they kept having me re-ask that question. And meadow was the only thing that was coming up. Turns out that the body was actually located in between an open spot in the forest, which would have been like a meadow, a grass field. Um, that's where it was found. I mean, it just the things that come through this thing, um, not not once do I doubt what what I hear because so far mm-hmm. and granted knock on wood let's hope it stays that way but so far it it has always been correct. That's fabulous. Yes, uh, it me, is. It's, oh, yeah, PK, have, I hope you do it. To, yeah, to to learn things about this because I have three children. You know, whatever affected him, could it affect them? Oh, yeah. So, question. Yeah. So that's. Yep. Yes, we'll Great have question. Chat. Yeah, absolutely. But you yeah. know the, the the whole the whole point of the technology or the the electronic box itself is only half the equation. The other half I owe to my wife because when we started investigating, I'd always jump right into investigating, and she'd always say to me, "Stop, stop, do this first. And so she'd stop me. And she'd say, hi, I'm Cherie. This is my husband, Tony. We're just here to communicate with you. We're not here to kick you out. We're not here to hurt you. We're not any threat to you. We just want to communicate. And she would do that over and over and over. And, of course, then finally I got in line and followed along. But I owe that to her because the other half of this equation is that connection to spirits or entities. And what she did for us was create a bond and create trust. And now when we got into the ITC or the instrumental trans communication, which what spirit boxes are, are called, um, it has opened that door for them to trust us, to feel free to communicate. Cause one, they know we're not going to freak out and go running out of the house because I mean, I, I do these right. I do these right in our house, and we have more spirits in this house than I could ever count. But none of them have been harmful. None of them have hurt us. In fact, they've even helped us so many ways, and probably more instances than I could name. Um, but so far, everything has been been positive. But I, I really owe my wife that that second aspect of this connection because she she did it right. She did. Gosh, uh, she the got woman with right your step, sure. right? Yeah, good <laughs> for her. Cherie, you are getting a big shout-out tonight for everything you do. You know, it is important, that connection of trust. Now, when these, when the voice or when whomever speaks to you, do you ever get an identity of who is speaking with you? Oh, yeah, we've gotten full names first and last. That's Anybody fabulous. famous that we would recognize? Nobody famous. Yeah, I, I I stay away from that just because there's a there's a certain degree of negativity that goes with it, um, especially if it's recent. Now, ones from you know 
many, many, many years ago, not so. But from a political standpoint, there there are people that do that, especially celebrities and stuff that have passed relatively recently. Now, whether it's actually working for them or not, it could be. I don't know. I, I'm not going to judge what what they do, but um, I stay away from I stay away from things like that. Yeah, I know the the Skull Group in the UK. I don't know if you're familiar with them, Robin Foy's group, but and they also had a team that they ended up working with on the other side that that did have some recognizable names, but they were from the you know distant past. And I understand right. exactly what you're saying about contemporary celebrities or somebody right. we would recognize. But Robin's group did was able to contact some very interesting people from long, long ago. And so that's what I was wondering, if any of those people stepped forward. But is it? do you think they work as a team with you like they do with Robin, or are you just turn on the box and whoever comes through comes through? Well, there's no doubt we have certain spirits that um, are are usually around to help us. In fact, I mean, we've actually pulled we, one of the spirits that's in the the Phelps Dodge Hospital, which we operate. Um, when we went to Baguio City, Philippines, to investigate the Diplomat Hotel, his voice showed up on our EVPs. Okay. So he literally followed us. And then one from San Carlos, we Bel Air House when we were there. We had another one from a previous location that followed us to the Queen Mary. So they are definitely we that we have a group of them that um, definitely help us with with answers that we're we're trying to achieve. But the other aspect of it that we have come to understand, and again, this is all theory because I can't I can't prove this, but there seems to be some sort of collective consciousness of entities where they share information because we've asked questions and even from, you know, private people who have said, Hey, I I need answers on this where it's specific to one individual. Like I can think of a client who was asking about her father, yet we were receiving answers from different spirits, different voices that were unrecognizable to to my client, but the answers were still correct. So wow. that universal consciousness of shared information is a concept that we strictly believe um, happens. What an exciting life you and Cherie live. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> it's never dull, that's for sure. Oh, Do you try? Well, I hate to break Lots away, but... We're going, to have, we're going to take your question next, uh, PK, and we come back from a quick break and continue mm-hmm. this very exciting dialogue with Tony Rathman, and he's going to share more about his experiences and his wife, Cherie's experiences with the other side. Stay tuned, everybody. You are listening to Supernatural Girls Radio. We'll be right back. Pure essential oil, specialized mineral and a revolutionary anti-aging technology. Astridium combines the best of all scientifically proven ingredients in easy-to-use creams, lotions, and concentrated serums. Astridium's advanced line of products take your skin to a new level of being healthy and beautiful. We offer a variety of collections that address all your skin concerns. The Essential Anti-Aging Series treats and moisturizes your skin for a long-lasting, younger look. The Multivitamin Series promotes healthy skin with high-quality vitamins and minerals. The Sports Series restores skin from cellular damage and stress. Astridian also offers a revitalizing solution for hair and a professional series for doctors and medical spas. Visit astridian.love today and begin your new journey to healthy, beautiful, youthful skin. Astridian, beyond your expectations. There are a lot of psychics out there. How do you decide which one is right for you? You look for someone who empowers you, who's practical and spiritually connected, who says, here are your opportunities, Here are your challenges, and here's a way to deal with them. And then gives you your own toolbox to make your life everything you want it to be. Hi, I'm Corby Mitleid, and that's how I work with you. As a certified professional tarot reader, I've helped thousands of people for over 40 years through my toolbox. 
cards, past life retrieval, numerology, spirit guide conferences, and mediumship. Whether it's career, relationships, finances, or your spiritual road, together we can replace your confusion with clarity. And you'll probably find a little laughter along the way. Visit me at CorbyMitlide.com to find out how to cross your bridge from fear to fearlessness and fly. And tell me you found me at Supernatural Girls for a special gift with your reading. Corby Mitlide, the practical psychic for catching your tomorrows today. Find me at CorbyMitlide.com. That's CorbyMitlide.com. Are you frustrated with endless mantras, affirmations, and processes that promise to align your life with your dreams only to find yourself years later in the same space where you began? Do you feel like you must be doing something wrong because nothing seems to be working? Don't you just wish that someone could shift your consciousness for you and your life could align with your desires without all the effort? Well, your wish is about to come true. Hi, I'm Carrie Cannon, and I have a gift that allows me to align the consciousness of others to be in harmony with their dreams. The best part is, it requires no particular effort on your part. Upon listening to a consciousness alignment, people have reported instant energy shifts, financial windfalls, soulmate connections, healed relationships, physical healings, and more. To gain access to a free trial offer for my entire Manifesting Miracles library of consciousness alignments, go to commandmiracles.com now for details. Again, that's commandmiracles.com for information about our free trial offer. That's commandmiracles.com. Welcome back, everyone, to Supernatural Girls Radio. I'm your host, Patricia Baker. I'm here with my co-host, PK, and our amazing guest tonight, Tony Rathman. Now, PK, you had a question for Tony. What was it? Well, I think one of the things I'm more interested in is because I got a couple of notes here from friends that have sent me something here. How do they decide whether it's wise, who, who to choose that they wish to speak with? Or is it chosen for them? They decide they want to get a reading. Does it put them in touch with who they need to talk to, or do they have to tell you who they're looking for? Yeah, we we would need to know who they're who they're looking for so that we can literally ask for them. I mean, okay. we have literally, like I said, we literally held up a picture, and the box has literally spit out the first name, and then of course the client goes, "Oh my God, yeah, that you know that yep. that's." That's him or her or whoever mm-hmm. they're looking for. Um, but the connection to who's answering the questions may not actually be that person. Again, that relates oh. back to that universal mm-hmm. consciousness that I'm talking about. It's just phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. And what does the lucky. voice yeah, sound it, like, Tony? <laughs> Is it, does it sound like a mechanical voice coming through a box, or does it sound like a person? Sounds like a person. Wow. Yeah, there's okay. there's nothing there's nothing mechanical about it. It um the spirits speak differently though than than humans do because, you know, for practical sense, there is no throat, there is no larynx. It's not a, it's not a a throat produced sound like we as humans speak. They're using electromagnetic frequency in order to send the voice to an electronic media that's interpreting those frequencies and then spitting it out in, in vocal sentences, kind of like a recorder records. And that's why EVPs, people always say, well, how is that, how is that possible? I couldn't hear it with my ears. Well, your ears don't hear electric, electric, make, electromagnetic frequency, but a voice recorder can. And when you play the voice recorder back, that's why you can hear the voice. And that's how we got into this whole ITC thing was because we were getting, and we still get today, the most amazing EVPs. I mean, they weren't single words. They were, they were full sentences. And when that started, that's what dragged us or dragged me into ITC. And I said, I got to figure this out. I, I want to, I, in the BSP7, I'm like, I can't hear this. I can hear them saying something, can't make out the words. And so we built and built and built and built, and now, um, now we can hear it. Yeah, I have phenomenal. one of those devices that's the staticky, you know, it's the radio type frequency thing. Yep. 
and it just irritates me because <laughs> that's all I hear is the static, and it it just I could never do anything with it. I don't know how anybody right. works with that. Well, we we did <laughs> because we knew there were answers there. I mean, I could hear them. Um, but you're right. The static will produce a, a, a really nice headache after about 15 yeah. minutes of listening to it. <laughs> but it, it was just, it was too much. And I'm like, there's got to be, there's got to be a way to clarify the sounds coming through this. And that's what we set out to change. And then of course we use multiple different ways to get those um, electromagnetic frequencies and turn them into voices or allow them to turn them into voices. Um, and, we tested, I don't even know how many designs, uh, but the one we have now works the best until I try something new. But but you're right. And then the other point to it is that even with EVPs, you can play an EVP for somebody who's listened to EVPs before, and they'll say, okay, yeah, I, I heard it, or I heard something. But you play it for somebody who's never listened to an EVP before, and they'll say, I didn't hear anything. Mm. And it's a training. It's a training to the ear as well. In fact, I did a session for um, another radio show host, Don Ecker, um, who does Dark Matters Radio. And when I sent it to him, he's like, "I heard some of it, but he said I, I couldn't, I couldn't make the majority of it out." Well, then I listed out what I was hearing, and then he was like, "Oh my God, I hear it now!" So it, it, it's an huh? ear training to be able to tell what what spirit communication and what they're saying. So that's, that's the other point um, in the, in the process of this development. But, you know, that but makes a lot of works. sense to me because when Becky Andreasen was alive, who I miss her so much, she's such a talented and, and sweet person. She was able to look at photographs and find all kinds of faces and spirits, and I'm like, where? <laughs> what are you seeing? <laughs> and, and and she she taught me how to look for these things. And I would send a photo to her. She would circle what she saw, and then I could see it. But it took me a while to get to that point where I could see what she was seeing. But she was just a natural, <laughs> like you are apparently, Tony, also with this kind of thing. Well, it, it's from it's from experience, but I remember the first EPPs that we ever captured. All I knew was it didn't sound like what I remember us asking. I couldn't I couldn't even pick out their words. I just know that I said something, and then sometimes they speak over you, is that they'll complete your question before you even sometimes finish asking it. And I kept saying to you, "This doesn't sound right. This doesn't sound right." I don't remember me saying this or and then after weeks of reviewing then i could pick out the words in the in the ep that were not mine and theirs and that they were speaking either above or below my voice and so yeah it's training is is a big part of being able to distinguish what's being said as well wow we just amazing what you guys are into and you've done so well because you've increased the power of the technology so that it's nice and clear for the most part you can hear it and so like you said you also create almost like a transcript for people to see what the answers Correct. are if they can't right. hear them themselves so that's wonderful what comfort you must bring to people with what you do you know that was one of the greatest aspects of it i mean i remember working with when we first started branching out beyond just paranormal which is still my favorite thing to do because you never know what you're going to run into. But, um, you know, when we actually helped the, the first people when they were trying to solve the cold case and just the, the gratitude that these people expressed towards us saying, you know, we can't tell you how much this means to us, and, you know, how you're helping us appreciate your time and everything you put into this and all the work. And that was just the best thing in the world to know that you're actually using something that, you have an ability to do to actually help somebody, and that was that was an amazing deal. It's so heartwarming, and with those cold cases, I know the family members suffer tremendously, and people just in this world don't know how to pick up the uh, you know the trail to basically solve the case. So here you are involved in, in helping bring closure to everybody. What a wonderful thing! How often do you do those kinds of cases, Tony? 
Well, it depends on when when they come up. I mean, they they you know they, there's not there's not a strict schedule. But it's just when things like that appear and they run out of leads and you know out of whether you call it desperation or just uh, lack of options to go try something, some alternative method, um, they usually end up finding us. And um, that's when we're like, yeah, we'll, 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 we'll do one, we'll see what we get. Hopefully we'll produce some leads. And so far, it, it has. And, uh, you know, where it'll go from here, only time will tell. You know, are you familiar, this is one of our, our favorite topics on the show. We have yet to get David Polites on the show. However, we have great respect for him and the work that he's done with tracking people that have disappeared in our national parks. Have you heard of his work? I have. So I'm wondering, because he has such a hard time getting answers. He's tried remote viewers. He's tried psychics. And he said nobody has been able to give him the specifics that he's looking for. I'm wondering if your ghost box can do it. My guess would probably be yes, that is good. Um, like I said, I'm, we're, we're amazed daily by this thing. And, um, you know, we don't even know yet what its full capabilities are. And so, yeah, I would, I would highly suggest saying that if, if he runs across another one where he's being asked to help and, Needs uh, needs assistance. We we be willing to uh, we be willing to help with that. I'm going to suggest it to David that he reach out to you because these cases are mm-hmm. so incredibly mysterious, and again the families are left with nothing. I mean they don't know what happened right. to these people. So right, um, which is the worst case scenario too. I and mean, that's what I was trying to express is, you know. He, the situation is bad enough to lose a loved one or something, but then to not have answers and to not know what had happened or to get any type of resolution only exemplifies that, that, uh, you know, bad situation to a degree that I can't even imagine. I can't either. And especially because in all of the things that David is tracking, he has identified that there may in fact be some type of a paranormal event that's occurring because of the big weather change and many, many other things that only David can address properly. Uh, but it just seems like it is, it may be, you may have an answer here for at least some of these cases of what has happened to these people, whether they've uh, gone through a portal or been taken by Bigfoot or UFOs or whatever. I mean, the other side certainly has a larger, more expansive perspective Absolutely. And, you know, with you saying that, there is a lot of crossover between where paranormal events are occurring and where UFO activity occurs. And we've found that repetitively when we were doing, we have our own show that we do actually, well, actually Wednesdays as well. Mine's like an hour after I'm done with yours, but where we review paranormal evidence from some of the best captures from paranormal um, investigators all over the world. And um, we were interviewing the the Heinzen family who now owns the the Conjuring house. And that was one of the things that came up even at the show that they were saying that, you know, the house was known for its paranormal activity, but that they they were also seeing objects in the sky, um, you know, things flying over that were unidentified and, so there is some connection between what we consider to be spiritual paranormal or ghosts and, and UFO activity. So that's very possible. Yes, and certainly that house uh, was a hot spot. But it was you know, we had Andrea on the show. She was a great guest, and she <laughs> seems like just uh, a lightning rod for all of these things. From UFOs yes. to goes to time slips. To every, I mean, she's just, a, you know, somebody who attracts all of these things, which is just so much fun to have her on talking about that. She <laughs> yeah, she's twice. great. Yeah, wasn't she on twice, PK? I think she was. With yes, us. she was. Yeah, she was great. So um, what about this? Has, has anybody ever come to you and asked about alien contact and have you ever had alien contact come through the box well you know i i don't know if i should mention this name but yes a woman by the name and i'm sure you know who this is heidi hollis 
I yeah. did one for her. Uh-huh. And, oh, my God, the responses that came through, everything from aliens to um, demons to the hat oh man. My. I mean, it was it was wow. off the charts. I've never heard anything like that come through. Of course, I never asked questions like that either, but um, that was a phenomenal uh phenomenal response that that we got for the 45 minutes or however long um i did it for her but yeah that was amazing that's great well heidi's also a very talented radio show host and artist and i know she's been involved with this stuff since forever so that's really exciting now when an alien comes through again do you hear it differently how do you know it's an alien no and, and you know that's that's probably the biggest question is the voices that are coming through, are they spirit? Are they extraterrestrial or alien or, you know, of some other time and space? No, for sure I have those answers, except for the fact when people say, oh, my God, that's the person who passed away that I was trying to reach, that's their voice. Um, One example that stands out at the top of my head was a woman that was trying to contact her father, and I was holding up a picture of her, and her father, and I said, you're in this picture. Who's in this picture with you? And a gentleman responded, that's me, daughter, not that's my daughter, that's me, daughter. And, of course, this woman's father was uh, British, and she said, we don't say me, we don't say my, we say me. It's just a slang term. That's me, cat. That's me, daughter. And she's like, that's his voice. So it's probably probably a combination of both but if spirits can use it through some sort of electromagnetic frequency i wouldn't see why aliens extraterrestrials or whatever you want to call them wouldn't have that same ability if they're if they have the ability to communicate with you without speaking i mean there's so many links that tie it all together that i wouldn't see why it wouldn't be possible but no to answer your original question there's no difference in the in the voice you can't tell that it's you know, okay, it so it's, they or, identify themselves to you. Is that what it is? Well, they were questions about, she was asking specific questions about certain things. And, and one question was, what was this particular thing? And the response was alien. Okay, I see. And what about the demon side of this? I mean, because obviously you said anybody can come through. What about that part of it? Yep. Well, that, that's a whole other issue. I mean, there are dangers in this, no doubt about it. And as we've gone through paranormal, we've definitely made our share of mistakes um, in learning what, what exactly to do and what not to do. So we've, we have had our personal issues with what I would consider to be very negative, pushing demonic um, entities out um, and like I said, we, we have entities come and go out of this house all the time. Um, so, you know, there's, there's certain um, things to protect yourself. There's prayers. There's closing prayers. There's, there's incense. Um, there's sage. There's crystal. There's, you know, just, just a slew of protection, holy water. Um, and we have a case just full of, Basically, it's a it's a protection case. When we visit, um, finish a bad investigation or do a session where we think we've run into something dark or negative that will break out and go through every process we need to, to make sure we're clear, the portal's shut, and, um, you know, the house is clear of, of whatever negativity that was. And has anything ever broken through your barrier? Yes, but again, by mistakes. We were doing Uh an investigation of this old hotel in Winslow, Arizona, and they actually have tunnels that used to go underneath the whole city. Most of them are blocked, but the tunnel system is still there. Well, we were allowed to go down to investigate, which was a great investigation, but we were seeing shadow figures. We had some of the meanest um, EVPs we've ever experienced, and by the end of the night, which was about 2.33 in the morning, my wife and I always do uh, St. Michael's Prayer of Protection and to close the session and break off communication. She said I was so out of it, I, I couldn't even say the prayer. And I remember her saying to me, I'm going to say it. You just repeat what I say. And I heard her say it. I mean, it's not like I couldn't understand what she was saying to me. 
but the words just literally would not come out. And oh, wow. she was so freaked out. She was so freaked out at that point. She was ready to stop paranormal investigating altogether. And we got through the night. She was able to, to get whatever was affecting me cleared. And then I reminded her the next morning, I said, didn't, didn't I hear you say to the spirits that to use their energy to communicate with us and if they didn't have the energy to use mine? <laughs> She's like, did I say that? <laughs> of course, playing back the recording, she sure did. I'm like, don't ever do that again. <laughs> <laughs> Look around oh, word. My goodness. Yeah. Oh. Now, do you ever experience well, all, being all, touched all the by people for. from the other side? I mean, do people, like, reach out and touch you, or do you have physical oh, manifestations? Been, yeah, I, I've been touched, pushed, slapped, punched. And I had three about five inch long scratches from um, about where my the bend of my arm is down to my wrist. Um, something scratched me for something I was doing, which they did not like at all. And of course, three scratches is um, indicative of mocking the Trinity, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Um, that's why it's threes, and this was without a doubt three scratches. We've had stuff enter the house and do things we did not like. So we've had to um, basically do a minor right to clear the house. Um, and we've done that for personal investigations for people that have had some pretty severe and dark entities in their house. But the first one we ever did was in Las Vegas, and this place was absolutely crazy. We reached out to Archbishop James Cloud, who put us in contact with a gentleman named Joe Thompson, who went from L.A. to Vegas Vegas to help us clear this house. Um, we did a minor right and, and cleared it. But those are those are rare. I mean, if you watch the shows out on television, they run into that every episode or every other episode. In 10 years, we've run into maybe two or three. Oh, my goodness. It was just, we could talk to you forever, Tony. This is so fascinating. <laughs> it is. You just draw dropping at times, and you think about the the situations that are available. Uh, sometimes when you're working with someone, and uh, someone's coming from the other side, do you help choose who's coming through, or is it strictly who they want to send through? No, it, we have we don't have any control of that at all. The, the most I can do the box is being overloaded because sometimes we'll turn it on, start asking questions and we'll get so many responses that you can't make any of them out because they're talking over each other. And we'll literally have to say, okay, all the other spirits, please wait. You know, we're trying to speak to so-and-so and and then it'll calm down and give that one spirit an opportunity to say what they want to say. But, and I've had to do that many, many times because, Every time we turn it on, I mean, we, we, whether it's a box we turn on, the e-box, or whether we run a digital recorder or a video camera in our house, we can't do it without it being loaded with voices that aren't our own. And it's oh, because my. spirits do follow us home. In fact, the first time this ever happened, my wife was giving the dog a bath. And when the dog got out of the tub, of course, dogs go crazy, and he was running around the room. Well, she thought it was funny, so she she turned her phone on, and she was videotaping the dog running around in circles and biting his own tail while the dog got out of the room and ran into the living room. Well, she took her phone, and she just tossed it on the bed to go chase the dog. Well, she forgot it was running, and I was out running errands. When, when I came home about 45 minutes later, I'm like, your phone's recording, and she's like, oh, it's still running. Shut it off. Well, I did shut it off, but then, of course, I thought, well, let's see what's on it. And there was voice after voice after voice, male voices, female voices. They were calling out the dog's name. They were telling the dog, settle down, don't do this. They were saying saying things like, Cherie, tell the dog this. And it it was unbelievable. That's (laughs) mind-boggling. Oh, my goodness. So that portal is always open with both of you. It, it, it is, and that's sometimes a good thing, sometimes a bad thing. We haven't tried to close it because so far it's been positive. But if it ever turns negative, 
we would have to shut it down. Luckily, we do know how to do that, um, having closed portals in, in other locations and people's private homes where they're open. Um, so it is reassuring. Plus, we have a connection of people throughout the paranormal world who can do, you know, almost anything that is known to be done um, when it has to do with cleansing or, or, or removing stuff or, so that's, you know, having that backup is, is also a huge benefit. So you have I your backup just in case you need it. That's good. Mm-hmm. Right, right. Now, do you, yeah, did this. you actually open a portal consciously or did it just happen because of your interest? Well, anytime you try to communicate with something that is not of this plain anymore or that has passed and it doesn't matter whether you're using a Ouija board a spirit box doing an EBT session you're opening that portal and you know portal is just a term for a space where they can come through and communicate with you but no matter what method you're doing you know people always say well don't use a Ouija board because they're so dangerous well the danger is no different than any other device where you're communicating with with people who are, who are past, you're opening that door to allow that communication to happen. And you can't always control what comes through. So you take that risk no matter what type of communication you do. So somebody could actually go to sleep, leave their phone on video record, and take a look at it in the morning and see if anybody is talking or showing up, right? Oh, absolutely. And, I mean, she happened to be using her phone, but even a digital recorder, she could let run for hours and then just pull it up on the computer and see if there's any audio spikes in there. If there's not, there's probably nothing there. If there are, listen to what those spikes are. But we did that for years trying to figure out how to improve communication. And, I mean, we did everything from different vibrational settings within boxes to see if, you know, the vibrations would bring out voice. I mean, we tested everything we could think of. But, yeah. I mean, and, and then once that door is open, though, because that's the only thing they, I want any audience listening to be aware of, is that once that door opens, I don't know how to close it. <laughs> I mean, we, we probably can't step away from the paranormal just because it knows who we are. About three years after we started, they started calling us by name, first and last name. Oh, I mean, oh I'll, I'll walk into a, I'll walk in, when we walked into the Globe Jail Saturday night, the first thing they said is, oh, the Rathmans. <laughs> and that happens time and time and time again, even if we, it's the first time we've ever stepped foot in there. So they're wow. watching you. <laughs> yeah, and it's part of that collective consciousness, too. I mean, it's a shared knowledge. Well, and you Once know, you people bring say they're always being watched anyway, so it's just that you guys have taken this to a whole other level, which is amazing and exciting. Right. You know, and one of the questions people, one of the questions people always ask is, okay, well, so why are spirits hanging out in cemeteries? People always say they go to cemeteries and they get eaten beef. Yeah, they do. But let me tell you, there are spirits everywhere. We've gotten EVPs with just my wife in the car going 75 miles an hour, and we've gotten EVPs in the vehicle from oh, wow. voices that are, that are not either one of us. So getting one in the cemetery, not that hard. Um, spirits literally are everything. Oh. So incredibly cool. Andy. has got to be critical on your behalf because it makes a difference of security and safety for the people you're working with. Correct. Yes. Yeah. I mean, there there are risks involved. The bigger risk to us is the client because they're, they're literally just sending information. The session is done by me. Um, And it's a risk I'm willing to take and we'll probably never stop doing this. So, (laughs) I don't think you should. It just sounds like, a, to me, this is a dream come true lifestyle to just be able to communicate this way so easily. Now, do you have an engineering background that allows you to build this stuff? Well, I, when I was in high school, I worked for an electronic shop in a small town that we grew up in. I learned a lot there as far as electronics. No, I don't have an engineering background. But what, what I did when I first started was I took spirit boxes apart. 
And then I took other ones that I bought. And after I had moved on past them, I took them apart. And I'm like, okay, how does this work? What circuitry is involved? How are these signals getting through? And then, of course, we took that and said, okay, we got to improve this. And then we, we reached out to electrical engineers, reached out to sound engineers, and said, okay, how do we, we want to correct this, we want to correct that. And then we were given information on how to do it. And then the funniest part is, as the box is starting getting better, we started asking spirits, what do I need to do to improve this? And believe it or not, we oh. have answers. See, that sounds like you're getting it right from the horse's mouth then and what to do next. They right. want to, that's right. They're definitely letting you know they want to be a part of it. Yeah, well, you think of it, if, if, if you could see what people are doing, if you could um, be able to experience what they're experiencing, but you have no way to communicate, Anybody who has an ability to allow them to communicate, they are going to flood to. And I can tell you that happens. Mm. Wow. Well, we got to start practicing some of this stuff, PK. We don't have the, the sophisticated box that Cherie and Tony have, but we do have our cell phones, right, and our computers. So. That's, that's true. God, God forbid knowing me and my boo-boos what I'm going to bring through. <laughs> or don't want to break through. <laughs> yeah, really. That, that is when I will be calling the man up the road and say, hey, Tony, uh, can, you, <laughs> can you shut this down? We'll help you. We'll help how you. About, how about animals? Do animals come through? The only time we've ever seen what we thought to be an animal spirit is on a device called uh, an SOS, which is a, oh, uh, my brain's gone up at the moment. Tony, you're fading out a little bit. I don't know if you need to move a little closer to the microphone on your computer or not, but we can hardly hear you. Is that better? Yeah, a little bit. The, the only time we've seen, the only time we've ever seen anything from an animal spirit is on an SOS machine, which is a basically a, a connect device that shows like a stick figure um, animation, and we've seen we've seen a dog that was actually in our own house that wasn't our dog. But when our dog came up, the stick figure and our dog actually started chasing each other around the table. But that would be about the only animal um, connection that I've seen. Mm -hmm. With cold cases, who normally contacts you? Is it a family member or is it the police or both? Um, Normally, oh, with cold cases? Oh, it usually comes through connections that I work with on, on cold cases. Um, they're, they're known to do and have been known for years to do cold cases. So they usually contact this person and then that person says, I need your help. Um, let's see what the box can bring. And that's how I'm connected to it. Mm-hmm. Have you ever found a missing person that's alive? I mean, has anybody come to you and said, this person is missing? Can you help us find them? And have you found them? That has not occurred yet, um, but if there is a missing person, I hope that would always be the outcome. But uh, no, I have not run across that yet. You know, well, it's interesting people, because it, most people don't think to contact you first, but it would be great if they did. Yeah, I mean, we, we've definitely been a huge help to, to ones in the past, but you know, of course, when you get into the hands of law enforcement, I mean, they're very scientific based. Um, they use us as a, a last option when they run out of leads. And, yeah, and understandably so. Right. I mean, it's, 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 right. It's really hard for them to turn around and say, well, this guy with this funny box says to go look at this. <laughs> you know, it, 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 and understandably so. I mean, I, I can understand why they do that. Yeah. You know, what about medical things? I know mean, you did mention the lady that came to you wanted to talk about her husband's health, and they did – come back with some medical uh, support, basically. I would think that they also might have some perspective on the other side about healing particular illnesses. They could contribute to that? Yeah, that, that's that's very possible. You know, the, the thing about working within the paranormal is that for every answer you get, there's a hundred more questions that come from it. And, you know, just like you were saying about healing and, you know, what, what information they have, um, There are also what we call, you know, I was talking about the universal consciousness. Well, there's also universal laws. There's certain things they're allowed to say, and there's a section 
that they're not allowed to say. And we've tried, we've tried to get them to break that rule over and over and over and over and can't get them to do it. But you, you can literally hear on the box when they're pushing that boundary and, mm-hmm. you know, you'll start hearing your spirit saying, enough, no more, stop, um, you know, someone's coming, um, no more, we're, we're going to get in trouble. It's, it's just, it's insane. Are you there, Tony? I'm here. Okay, oh, we good. lost him for a second. <laughs> you kind of went I, to the I other side, I think. <laughs> Tony, I, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm not. I haven't moved. I'm not sure what uh, I, changed. I think they want to talk to us. Um, yeah, because you were. It's almost like somebody picked you up and moved you over. So. Mm-hmm. Really. Yeah. Well, you, you know, I, like I, that I don't doubt that. Yeah, they want to talk. But you were saying that using the ghost box on the air through the phone doesn't work very well. No, because it does deal with um, electromagnetic frequency and other things. Um, Mm -hmm. I've never used it on a cell phone because I don't know what it would do to the reception or how the 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 best I've done is like through a a two way like Zoom or Skype, um, which is a a closed circuit um, connection. Mm And haven't had any issues with that. All right, let me ask you a question, Tony. Different ones have made reference to the fact that they think JFK Jr. is still in our space. And everyone says, no, they know he was gone. They know that the plane went down. Things were taken care of. They saw the bodies, et cetera. But they still swear that he is on this planet, on this side. Are you able to speak with his the, the departed side of him to see what the, if this is in fact a truism or if this is another one of the makeshift things that come about in history. Well, it's definitely a question to be asked. What the response would be would be difficult to say how he's actually doing it. But yeah, it's a question that could be asked. If he truly is departed, he may answer himself. Somebody may answer for him, and that answer mm-hmm. could be yes, he's here. No, he's still there or anything in between. Um, so to predict what that answer would be, I can't, but can that question be asked? Or... It, it surprises me that at this point in time, people are still assuming he's going to show up. Right, right. <laughs> they kind of sit there and go, uh, as far as I know, I saw what everybody else saw at the time. As far as I'm concerned, he's no longer a part of this planet, but... Uh, who am I to argue? All the stranger things than that have happened. Well, yeah. I mean, yeah. if you look at the whole Jim Morrison thing, I mean, we had George Lugo on the show talking about Jim Morrison and saying, oh, Jim Morrison's still alive. I didn't find him on the other side. And the family agreed with him. So mm-hmm. it's very interesting. It could be, but who knows? I mean, I guess the only way is to talk to the box and find out. That that would be an interesting experiment. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there, there's just there's so many. Every time we bring the box up or discuss it with people, you know, the the ideas just keep flowing. In fact, I think you had Joshua Shapiro on your show a while back, did you not? We did. Okay, well, I actually did some tests with him with the box and got some amazing answers about the crystal skulls and the blue skull he's looking for, and oh, yeah. and all sorts of other things, but. Uh, yeah, you just the, the the possibilities for it are are, are endless. It's just endless. Oh, this is so exciting! Amazing. Oh my God, Tony, we're coming to the end of the show. I hate to say that because, like I said, we could talk to you all night. This has been so phenomenal. Thank you so very much again. Uh, people who want private experiences with Tony in the Box, you know how to reach him. We're going to repost the links of all of his websites for you on our Facebook page tomorrow. Be sure to check it out. Oh, my goodness. And good luck with the Lizzie Borden live stream. We'll be announcing that again and how to do that next week when Renee comes on the show to talk about Bloodline of the Holy Grail. So until then, everybody, be safe, and we'll see you on the Blue Highway. Good night, everyone. Good night. Thank you, Tony. Good night. Thanks for listening. Tune in next week for another radio adventure with Supernatural Girl.